Welcome once again, everyone, to the Two Mats and a Jeff uh, podcast. So I'm here, Matt Moyer, with my brother, uh, Jeff Moyer, and joined, as always, with uh, Matt Bannon. So that's the Two Mats and a Jeff uh, sports talk podcast. And today we're going to be talking about our top small forwards in the NBA of all time. So we've each developed our own list as to who we think are the top uh, small forwards in the NBA of all time, and uh, we're going to jump right into it. Matt, why don't you start with your list, and at least starting with the top five, and we'll go from there, and let's see what you got. Well, at number five, I have Scottie Pippen. Um, as you guys know, I'm all about the D. Scottie was uh, ten times all D, two steals a game, um, and um, I just think that you know there's really no goat as far as MJ goes if, if Scottie's not there. Um, I, you know, I just think that he he's the reason that MJ ended up as the GOAT. And, and I, I've said that before. I think that every Batman needs a Robin. And if you look back at MJ's career, uh, he didn't win titles till he got his Robin. And I think the defense, you know, you look at the stories of the defense of both those guys together matter. And, uh, you know, just like we talked about before about Dennis Robin and the defense, defense is a big deal. I mean, Pippen had brought a lot of other things to the table, but it's a good point. As I say, yeah, defense wins championships, and that's certainly what happened there, you know? Yeah, I still remember as a Lakers fan, I still remember his deal on Magic in the duel's first finals or whatever. That, 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 I think that was a big difference as far as that finals win or whatever, and they swept them. Uh, my number four is Dr. J. And for those of you uh, listening, I'm wearing my Dr. J jersey today because I knew he'd be coming up on everyone's list probably. He's definitely on my list and definitely uh, – a uh, legendary basketball player yeah, at his yeah. position. Yeah, Doc was sensational, and uh, he's always quiet but had that toughness or whatever. He never was overt as far as his actions or everything, as far as personality. Um, his ABA days, everyone forgets about those. Um, but you know, I remember back, way back, because I'm older than you guys, but the ABA, his ABA days, he was he was really the reason, as I th- Jeff, I think you yeah, mentioned more time. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you have to look at, you know, when you look at career stats, you can't exclude the ABA stats for him. Although if you just look at his statistics, when I was doing my research, and I'll share a little bit more when I get to my list, they just include the NBA. But I looked at those ABA stats because I don't think you can exclude those. Cause a, good, a good portion of his career was there. Yeah. And when you look at his whole career and his numbers, um, they're pretty impressive, especially when you include those. Um, you know, I, I don't think it was a, a lesser league at that time. I, you know, I think right. the NBA wanted to acquire them and wanted them to be a part of it because of flashy. all the great players. Yeah, they were flashier, you know. Yeah. Right. And that's definitely Doc. He was a flashy player. Okay. Uh, my number three is Kevin Durant. Um, I, I had Doc at three at one point, and I put Durant ahead of him just because I think Durant can achieve more. Um, you know, obviously with everything going on now, Durant being on um, the Nets and, and, and being mm-hmm. injured and everything, you know, if, I, don't, I think if he doesn't get injured last year, um, that the, the Warriors probably beat the Raptors, and that's another win for him or whatever. But yeah, I could disagree yeah. more. And, you know, when you get to my list, you're going to see, you know, the differences there. But Kevin Durant, to me, um, you know, is weak. He's a weak player. He's got a lot of skills, don't get me wrong, and he may prove me wrong in the long run. But right now, what you see with his career, joining the Warriors is is at a weakness. And to, to put him ahead of Doc, it just, you know, is a travesty to me because – you know he's just not he's just not a tough guy he's, and he might like I said he might prove me wrong in the long run but right now his body of work which you, you know you always like to talk about when you're talking about greatest of all time I'm not picking him on my team over Dr. J if I have to do a a, a starting lineup right now I, I just wouldn't do it um I just think his his when you get to the playoffs you need guys that are mentally tough and and can get you over the hump and I'm not sure that he has that uh, I disagree. I think okay. he does have that. I mean, he does have. I'll get to that in a second. He has two rings, both both fine. He has two Finals MVPs. He has an MVP. Um, he's a four time scoring champ, which I didn't realize. I knew he scored a lot, but I didn't realize he was a four time scoring champ or whatever. Um, his move to Golden State, I think, is weak as well. I, I I think if if he stays in OKC, they actually might end up beating the Warriors or whatever. And I actually have down here if OKC would have been smart enough to keep Harden, Harden. instead of Ibaka, yep. they, we'd have more rings or whatever. But my toughness thing is that first finals, I think it was, when they played in Cleveland or whatever, and I forget what the what game it was or whatever. It wasn't like game one or so. But he had a three-point shot over LeBron that was like a dagger and everything. Now, I don't think like physically tough when I think of Durant. Um, and I think actually working or playing with Russell Westbrook actually hindered his career. I think he would have been more of a leader. And he couldn't really be that when he went to Golden State. So I'm curious to see what happens 
when he with right. the Nets, whether right. he's Kyrie, whether, whether he lets Kyrie take the lead or whatever, or he's the man. Or whatever. So I think I would be really curious to know. see if he ever gets to the point where he's the man. I think he likes. Team. I think he likes being not the man, right? And but being that big scorer and being everything, because I mean, you know, it just seems like it's, that's his personality. You know? Well, I think again, his body of work. We'll see if he can. The great players figure out where they fit in um, to those things. So he. If he's going to be a great player of all time, in my mind, right. um, he's going to have to figure out how to fit in there. Like with Russell Westbrook, like he, you got to figure out how to. If you're about winning, and and that's what some of these you know players, I, I can, I'm concerned about their desire to win as opposed to desire to win scoring titles and desi- like, right. listen, a scoring title is great. That's an individual accolade that is that is is an accomplishment that is incredible. Few guys can do it, obviously, right. but. Winning a championship, it's about winning games. And, and if you're about individual stats, like that's great that he won in that. But he didn't win anything until he went to a, to a team that was already winning. Right. You know, like that to me diminishes his greatness. Now, if he can bring it, he, he has a lot of time left in his career to prove me wrong. But right now, maybe he is me- more mentally tough than I thought. But I think that's a, a, just a weak move going to Golden State. And it, it's, a, it's, it's out of a... And I guess that's part of our generation, but it's out of a, a right. weak area. Not that he had to stay with OKC, but it, it tarnishes him until he can prove he can do it without a super team. Right. In my opinion, right. I mean, he did come back last year from right. that injury too. If he doesn't come back from that, I might be thinking, I mean, you know, to his detriment too. I mean, I think yeah, so. I think it's just a personality thing with him. You know, you know, as far as that goes. But. Yeah. So he went. I mean, yeah. my three four was close. Yeah. Or whatever, but. I think also the last point I just make yeah. on him and let you move on would be. Yeah. He's a three, and how tall is he? Yeah, seven feet tall. Yeah. Seven foot tall. So when he shoots, he makes shoots. a shot over LeBron James, right. how many inches does he have on LeBron James? It's like three inches. Yeah, yeah. three, four inches on LeBron yeah. um, as a three. And that, that I, I don't want to make it that a you know, seven foot guy playing a three should diminish him completely, but there's something to that in my mind with the greatness and all. And if you got three or four inches on a guy, well, you should be able to shoot over him. And I know it's LeBron. But you should be. You got three or four inches on that guy. You should be able to shoot over him. Now, in the moment, to make the shot takes mental toughness and all that right. kind of stuff. Right. But if at seven foot you can't shoot over almost everybody, what, what what's happening there? Right. I agree. So okay. anyway, all right. okay. So my number two is Larry Bird, Larry Legend. Um, three rings, two Finals MVP, three MVPs, three All D. Which I, I mean, you don't think about Larry with the defense or whatever. And one of the things I didn't realize he averaged ten boards a game, ten. I mean, you know, at, at the double, small yeah. forward or whatever, basically, yeah, double double, average double mm-hmm. double. Um, and the, the thing with Larry is just the trash talk, like him <laughs> telling you what he's not not in a not in a three point contest, which he did, but not in a pickup game, not in whatever, in an NBA game, telling you you're guarding me, I'm going, yeah. this is what I'm going to do, and still doing it, and you yeah, can do nothing yeah. about it. Yep. That that amazed me. No, he's and he's. Probably the opposite of like Kevin Durant, like as far oh. as like a hard work and oh. not that, I'm not saying Kevin Durant yeah. they're hard work, well, but uh, when you think of Bird is you know just the desire and everything else. Right. Well, he desire had to work hard yeah. because he yeah. didn't get he wasn't yeah. gifted with as many right. natural skills. But right. I do think, and there's been a lot of conversation lately on sports talk radio about Larry Bird and where he falls in the right. same conversation in this level of greatness. So there's been a lot of current conversation on Larry Bird and where he falls in, you know, right now compared to these guys. And I'm, I, I, I still think that he uh, could play in today's game and so on. I think that there's a lot to be said for that. What, what do you I think, think, Matt? Well, I, well, I was going to say, I think he could play, but I think when we were surprised with the all defensive teams, I think that's unfortunately where we might have trouble guarding some of the much quicker three uh you know what? especially because of a, a three's game is you know shooting rebounding you know dribbling you know all the all the main skills you know right you got to do well i think if larry played today he would be a four not a three right. just a stretch four or whatever and i wrote what i wrote down is he could play today because he would be on a team he just he's spotting up at the three and he would right. he'd hit him as consistently as death or whoever right. so right. True. So, that was, so Larry's my two. So my number one, and I'm curious to see if you guys don't have him hit this guy number one, is LeBron. Just um, just physical specimen. Um, you know, his losses in the finals, you know, 
put him down a little bit, but not to the point where he would fall on a small forward list. I mean, greatest of all time list might be a different story or whatever. Uh, three rings, three finals MVP, four MVP, six all D. Um, just one of the greatest passing forwards of all time. Um, you know, some passes that he throws across court. So if he's on one side of the court and throws them across the court to somebody spotting up for a three, just the fact that they get through. I mean, you guys have played. You know, you yeah. don't throw a pass cross court. And then he does what you're not supposed to yeah, do. Yeah, right? you're not supposed to do that. They're going to get picked off all the time. Definitely an unselfish player. Yeah. I mean, I see 7.2 assists. Yeah. Average for his career, 7.2. Yep. So in the greatness that, that he certainly is as a player, he's unselfish as well. Yes. Yeah. And my, my thing with him is he just doesn't have the killer mentality. I think if he had even some of Jordan or Kobe's mentality, he could even be. I don't think, he, I don't think ever, anyone's ever going to catch MJ or whatever, but just he, he could do that. And, and the chase down block in the finals, to me, that's a symbolic moment in, in LeBron's career or whatever, just because, you know, Coming back from three one and just the tone that that said, and again, you know, guys know me, blocks and D. So that that to me is well. If you watch that, that, and I, I've heard him talk about it, yeah. you can see he goes up with a hand on either side of the rim because he was prepared if he went reverse Underneath. to block it on the other side. I have to watch that now. So when you watch it. that, so you can see the the clear understanding of the game yeah, too. Like this is right. not just a guy that's an athletic specimen that I'm going right. to run down and I'm going to block this and I'm going to show you that I'm better than you or whatever, right. which he is. But I'm also understand the game because I'm mentally smart enough and you can watch it and he, he says it afterwards. You can see because you look at it and I think, why is your hand over there? Right. His hand's over there because he's ready to block it if he goes reverse. I'm blocking you no matter what. I'm going to chase this down and do that. And that kind of stuff matters. That kind of hustle matters. And that is the kind of hustle that, you know, only the creme de la creme of players will do um, and are physically capable of. Well, I was just going to say, and, you know, I have, obviously, he's going to be on my list here. um, But, like, you know, he could not win the very first time in Cleveland. He had nobody. I mean, he had nobody else. And... You know, so, you know, we went to the finals, and he was literally carrying that team. And then when he, you know, when you think about the other Cleveland team, and, you know, he he just carried those guys. So You mean Matthew Delavadova is not a uh, – a, He got a big he's contract. He's not Robin. He he's got not a big Robin. Contract. He got a big contract because of yeah. – Right. So. Well, and, and, you know, I agree with you as far as his, his greatness and as far as – I mean, he carried some really mediocre teams to the finals. Couldn't get him over the hump. I'm not sure who could – but I do think if he had the killer instinct that you mentioned of a Kobe or, or Michael Jordan, he may have gotten over, over that. You know, you want him to be unselfish in things, which he is, right. but I also want him to be just a little bit more win at all costs, and I'm not sure that he is, and I think he would have a few more. I, I think he might have a, a ring or two more had that not been the case. But it's hard to argue against him as, as right. the number one. We'll see. What do you got, Jeff? All right, so I've got... A lot of similarities, but my five is different. Okay. Um, and you'll see who is not in my top five, which is different. Um, so, my number five, I went back in a day, um, and I went Elgin Baylor. Um, because, again, doing, you know, when you just think about players, you think of certain players, but then when you start really looking into researching, which we were doing for this, right. um, you know, Elgin Baylor... Average 27 points per game, 14 rebounds per game. So as you were mentioning with the rebounding with Larry Bird, I mean, and he also averaged four assists per game. So when I was looking at some of the other players, you'll see, uh, like I said, who wasn't on my top five. Um, That's why I ended up putting Elgin Baylor there. Uh, He didn't win a championship. Um, but he was, you know, lots of all-star appearances and everything else. Well, so, that, and I've said this in, uh, in previous episodes, you know, the title conversation is always hard for me because you can be a great individual player, not win a title because your organization didn't put players around you, or you could not win a title because of a lot of other reasons, you know. Right. Uh, I, and you look at it, and I also have a hard time with guys I didn't actually watch play and where they fall on things That's and wild. how that falls. But his statistics are clear they're pretty right. impressive. How does that go in the grand scheme of if he played against a LeBron or a Larry Bird, would he have those same statistics? I don't know, but they're still darn right. impressive. Right. So that's my five. My four is Kevin Durant. So as you guys were mentioning, we, we talked about Kevin Durant a lot. Right. Um, and uh, so anyway, yeah, you know, with the one MVP, as you mentioned, and his, you know, just scoring average. And, his, you know, he had four assists a game. 
which you know I didn't think about as well. We can think about all the scoring titles. He's actually a playmaker as well. Um, my number three is Dr. J. Um, again, you know, he had the one MVP in the NBA, but when I look back, again, talking about the ABA, he was a three-time MVP in the ABA. Um, again, going with only his statistics in the NBA, 24 points per game, nine rebounds per game, four assists. And then just a little side note, you know, because I didn't, you know, you think of the ABA, you think of a couple of teams. Like, I didn't know he played for the Virginia Squires. I didn't even know that yeah. was a team, yeah. um, you know, back way back in the 70s. So, uh, but of course, we know when we talked about Dr. J. Uh, number two, uh, I have Larry Bird. So, again, we talked about Larry Bird. And again, the three-time all-defensive team really shocked me. Um, of course, he was on great teams. He had a lot of great players around him. Um, you know, which, but again, he was the man on those teams. Um, so, but again, he did have the help. He did know. have help, but yeah. when you look, I mean, you know, and I'll speak to Larry Bird a little bit more when I get to my list, but I think, you know, you look at, he's a guy who just, uh, you know, would never be out hustled by anyone, you know, and he had a lot more skills than people give him credit for in terms of his quickness and, and those things. You watch some of the stuff that he did in terms of fakes and passes and all these kinds of things. The court vision that he had, yeah. you know, his assists, um, which were 6.3 a game. So statistically, you know, that is only, uh, you know, on the list that I have at least, there's only one guy that makes more assists than he does, and that's LeBron. Um, you know, he saw the floor, and you watch some of his, if you didn't watch, see him play, if you, if you watch him on YouTube or wherever else, and you watch some of these plays where the ball's coming off, he gets the rebound, and sometimes he doesn't even grab the ball. He taps it directly to another guy who's in the right spot for an immediate layup. Yeah. That is something that not a lot of guys can do because they're focused on getting the rebound, which he got a lot of. Right. He gets focused on, so in that second, he got two statistics. He got a rebound and an assist. And, of course, helped his team to the victory. Right. And my number one is LeBron. Um, I'm actually surprised with Matt that you actually had LeBron number one. Just a little older. Uh, but, you know, like you know, we were talking about our older. But, yes, I mean, I again, looking at everything, um, you know, a goat is a different, you know, discussion. Right. But, um, like you said, as far as forwards go, I mean, you know, besides his physical abilities, um, you also got to remember, too, you know, like he came in right from high school. He had a lot of pressure because at that time, you know, his high school games were being videotaped and everybody could see him as a high school player coming in. Um, he came to his hometown. So, I mean, I think about all these different pressures he had. Um, now, granted, you know, he puts a lot of that on himself as well. But, you know, I think a lot of the, you know, media and everything else put it on him too. Um, and like you said, I mean, he's, I mean, how many years has he got you have to play? And he plays Tons the minutes. minutes. And to do that for the number of years he's been in the league at an elite level. Right. And, you know, you're talking about how smart he is, but also how, you know, knowledgeable he is of the past of basketball. Like he's, right. you know, he knows about – all the things about the past and once you know that's why he strives to be the best he is but you know I think you know a lot of us as older people watching the game sometimes we diminish him but uh, because of Jordan but you know he's got a lot of attributes and I think for me you know we I think the one the one thing we always come back to at least for me I come back to him is when he did the decision right. on TV right. um, that was probably the you know the, the mistake that I think he made as far as doing that that way otherwise you know he wanted to win now maybe it might have been maybe he could try to you know, and he said he did try to bring those guys to him um, but he know. wanted to win right. I think you know the decision was a mistake but I also think the hype not one not two you know, not three right. that's a mistake that's a young man's mistake and yes. he's learned from that yeah. I think LeBron learns from his mistakes and is a much more intelligent basketball player, intelligent man, yep. not to mention the off-the-court things, which I think he's an incredible human being with the things he does with his school and so on. You know, he's right. a guy that is a great person. But he's evolved in his game, and he's smart. He doesn't stick to the same foolish things over the time, which I think helps him evolve, you know, to become a much better player. Yeah, I'm really curious to see his yeah. final chapters. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely, definitely. definitely. So I'm going to yeah. get into my top five. So I, I have uh, – I'm going to tell you right out that – 
Kevin Durant is not in my top five. No, he is not top in my ten? top five. And we'll so and, and so I know that there might there's certainly some argument, and I think if we had this conversation in five years from now, he might get in there. But right now, that guy's body of work doesn't say it for me, and I just think he's he is in my mind a weak player in a lot of ways. Um so, but I do. But he is he is a good player. But he's going to fall much lower on my list than you guys. But I have a guy in my top five that you haven't mentioned at all, and my five is Paul Pierce. So I know that that may seem like a lot higher than he should be, and I got gotcha. you. But I, I, you know, he's fifteenth all time in points scored in the NBA, uh, ninth in free throws, eighth in threes. So his career, you know, second in Celtics history in points. So. Think about that statistic right there. Second in Celtics history. Now, for a lot of teams, that wouldn't mean a whole lot, I don't think. Right. But the Celtics and their storied franchise, I think that means a lot. 19.7 points, 5.6 uh, re- rebounds, 3.5 assists for his career. Um, an NBA champ, a finals MVP, a 10-time All-Star. So I looked at his body of work, and, and, I, and, and I put him at five. I know there's, there could totally be argument about that. But... That's what this is about. Yeah, yeah that's what. So, um, the the rest of my list is going to look similar to you guys, but I want to make some points about these guys. So, my number four is Scottie Pippen. I know that falls differently than some of your list, um, and I had marked out the same thing you did, Matt, with two steals a game. You know, his defense um, is just incredible, and and one of the things we didn't talk about with with him is the way he carried that Bulls team the first year that Michael Jordan was gone. And you think about this. That team had the best player in the world on it. That team had the arguably the best player ever on it. He left, and they made it. How far, you know, with 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 Scottie Pippen leading them. So, you know, I, I think that you know people don't give him enough credit. He was a Robin that year. He had to be Batman, and he was pretty darn amazing. Now there are things, obviously, you know, in his career that are questionable, and some of the I'm things he did. Say that. That, that I certainly wouldn't have done and things that, you know, when you when you hear about it, you wish he would go back and say, well, yeah, I made a mistake. Well, but, a, well I was going to say, that's, you'll notice I didn't have him in my top five. Right. So you guys had him high. I actually have him, you know, when we go to our next page, um, he's in there. But when I, when I looked, just, I mean, the defense really stood out. But, again, when I looked at a lot of the other things, like, you know, his points per game and things um, weren't just as high. And I think, you know, you know not – not again. He did have a lot of pressure when he was on the Bulls for with the Jordan thing. But after that, like even you know when he played, like um, I guess he for me he couldn't he wasn't the man, um, and that's why I didn't have him. Because when I started looking at um, another player, who he's used lower on my list, um, like a James Worthy type, uh, which I know you know the Lakers guy. Like you know a James Worthy was like a third man, and he had basically the same stats as Scottie Pippen, who was like. The second man, if not the first man. That's, so that's why we'll go into yeah. some other Well, I mean, you look James at James Worthy, Worthy but, and he's on my list later, but, too. I want to talk about him. But he's a guy who, if you didn't grow up in our generation, younger generation don't know who okay, James Worthy right. is. No, no. But because he was a third, but I just meant, like, like, third best player on that team, he, he's incredible. The only thing I'm bringing him up is that statistically he was very close to, to Pippen. Pippen. Yes. That's all. So go ahead. So go ahead. my number three, Dr. J. And as I mentioned earlier, I included his ABA stats when you look at overall ABA and NBA stats. 30,026 points, 24.2 points per game, 10,525 rebounds, 8.5 a game, which is up from, if you just look at his NBA stats, his NBA stats is 22 points a game, 6.7 rebounds. You include those ABA. Now, some people would argue, I know we're talking all-time for NBA, but I think it's hard because, you know, at that point in time, it's not like he had a choice, really, at first, and say, okay, I'm choosing the ABA over the NBA. I don't know if that's really how that worked out that way. Um, but again, two-time ABA champ, two-time ABA MVP, three-time, um, you know, uh, no, three-time ABA MVP, um, five ABA All-Star games, all those things. So, you know, Dr. J... It's just a guy that, I, you know, uh, incredible player. Like you said, quiet, so he doesn't get as much, right. you know, PR out there. The one uh, thing I will mention about Julius, Dr. Irving, was I got to meet him. And I remember shaking his hand. And you can always tell in the pictures. Yeah, like, well, I just meant when you think about all the highlights that he had, he, that's why he could, you know, we, it, you know that, hand, that ball well, stuck on that hand. Up and under. Move. Right. So well, I mean, yeah, when you look at some of these guys, again, you know, 
that they have natural gifts. And the guys that had the big hands could do things. You see Jordan with Fakin and, and Dr. J as well. Um, but Dr. J was, you know, again, an innovator and something I don't think I'd said earlier as much as, like, you know, he was the guy who really drove so much stuff in that era. He drove the ABA to be to merge with the league. He, he you know, the first dunk contest he won, and that brought that over to the NBA. And that seems like, oh, that's just flash. But that flashy play is what is now part of the NBA. He was the innovator. It was innovative at that time. He was doing those things that didn't exist. So that, I think, adds to part of his greatness. Um, my, my number one and number two. So I'm going to tell you, I really wanted Larry Bird to be number one. I wanted him to be number one. I was trying the best I could on my list to make him, and I couldn't because when I looked at the statistics between these two guys, I couldn't do it. I looked at, so LeBron's my one and Larry Bird's my two. LeBron's points, 27.2. Larry's, 24.3. Rebounds. Now, uh, there Larry has him. Rebounds. But the assist, 7.2 for LeBron, as I mentioned before, and only six only 6.3. Yeah, right. Only. But... I think one of the things that hurt Larry Bird was the back injury, which, um, he, if you don't know this story, he really did to himself because instead of hiring somebody at his farm to dig stuff up, he, he I forget what project he was doing, he did it himself. If he hadn't had the back injury, his career may have gone longer and maybe his statistics would, have be, would be different. Um, but Larry Bird, to me, I think is a guy that plays in any generation. He's an all-star in any generation. And one thing we didn't mention about Larry Bird – that he and Magic saved the NBA, and they did. Yes, if they you did. don't know that, you need to go look yeah, that go up. Look I up. mean, you know, what he did, people often want to say a lot of different things about Larry Bird and his greatness as a player or not or this and that. And when you look at these statistics and the guys he was playing against, which is tough-nosed basketball at that time, yeah. the thing about Larry Bird is he got these statistics, you know, with, with, his, with his shooting and stuff at a time where guys would maul you. They would hammer you, and it was just regular old foul, foul. that's it Common if foul. that so that difference too in the way the basketball is played you know if he was getting hit and having to go to the free throw line he would have a ton more points because he would be going up there knocking down all those free throws yeah. because he is was such a great just shooter sure. so in this generation he becomes just as great a player in my mind because of those things because it wasn't as hard nosed it wasn't as those things so Larry Bird too and of course LeBron James we mentioned all that but you know um, 15 time All Star 15 time NBA six time All Defense because that matters a, a well rounded player four time MVP three times Final MVP three three, three times champ you know so Le LeBron we all agree is the best even though i really wanted to make larry larry bird but who else do you got on your list I, you know i have a mix of guys that I, and i'm going to tell you that you know and i'm going to let you guys talk then but i really shaded away from some of the younger players um until their body of work i think they're the incompleteness of that makes it hard for me to say best all time because you don't know what the rest of their career is going to be like so it was hard for me to put them on the list yeah. but i'm going to tell you I couldn't keep some of the guys off as much as I wanted to when you start looking at their statistics, even up to now in their career, as much as I wanted to not put in my top ten some of these guys, I had to. So what else do you got on your list, Matt? Uh, well, uh, just I'll, real quick. So I have, the six I have John Havlicek. Um, I didn't realize that he had eight rings. Um, some of those obviously were back in the days when the Celtics yep. won 11 of whatever it was when, when, when Russell won all his. So some of those are complimentary. I think he was a six man then even, I saw. Um, Eight all D for John Havlicek, like which I had no idea, no idea. Now That's you know true. I'm older than you guys, and I got to see him play a little bit, but I had no idea he had eight all Ds. Um, most games played and most points in Celtics history, or whatever. Which to me was why I, I mean Pierce, you'll see, but um, so that's why I had Havlicek there. Um, I actually had him at I actually had him at seven and moved him to six, and my seven is Elgin Baylor, who you okay. talked about. Um, the no rings. The 13.5 rebounds I, I stood out to me. I mean, you know, a lot of guys can score. Guys, a lot of guys can't score with what he did, whatever it was, 27 in game. So, and then the 13 or 13.5 or 14 rebounds a game. That to me, any error if you have those stats, you're gonna you're gonna yeah. stand up. And those stats are impressive with the guy, but he doesn't have the rest of the resume some of these guys have in terms of other things like All Stars, 11 time All Star, 10 time All NBA. The list from there is pretty short. Right, There's not much have else a lot for him. Down, exactly. right. And that's why I had him lower on my list. Um, and again, in the, in the time he played, 
there's not as many athletic. So how many rebounds is he getting over yeah. LeBron James? Or how many right. rebounds is he getting over um, Kawhi Leonard or yeah. some of those other guys? Questionable, you know. Okay. So I had Elgin Baylor there. My eight is Kawhi Leonard. I Originally, I didn't even have him in the top ten. And then I started looking more, like you said, more into his stats. And I'm like, wow, even – even at his, the age he's at and the point in his career or whatever, um, you know, two rings, two finals MVPs, five all D, two defensive player of the years. Um, just, I mean, he didn't, you know, he averages at this point, I think, around 17-7, 6.3 rebounds. So just, and the, the, everyone talks about the eye test. When I watch him play, he just stands out as an all-around good player. Like, even on those Spurs teams when it was Duncan, Ginobili, and Parker, you know, he won the MVP of that finals against the Heat or whatever because he was the difference. And I actually have him higher on my list, believe it or not. And I, yeah. I and I don't really like him as a player in terms of, you know, he's not a guy I'm a fan of, I guess. I'll say it that right. way. I like him as a player in the sense that he's incredible. He's got ice in his veins. When you watch him play, the guy, I mean, I had him number six at, because it was just so hard not to. When you watch the way he just goes out and plays – and I, he doesn't look shook by anything, and I think exactly. that that matters. When you get into, you know, some of these guys who didn't, like the Elgin Bear, Baylors who didn't win any titles, you know, and having not seen him, I wonder how they are in the finals, and that's where it matters, in the playoffs, in the finals. And this is a guy who you give him the ball, and he will win you the game if he needs to, and that is the sign of a truly great player. And even though his, you know, certainly his resume is not complete, um, the guy's just cold as ice i mean he's a weird personality it's, i well, don't care it, for the personality but his playing wise he, he actually it's, it's funny though you actually surprised me that you have him there just, too, because of, just because of what you were talking about like this like the resume is not complete well but i don't about that but also because he load his mat load manages right. so he's saving himself for those so that's why i kind of well, surprised that you had him there because actually that's why i dropped him on mine because of his lack of playing you know, all the different times. and right. Well, anyway. I wonder, and it's, it's no way to know, at least not for some Joes sitting in their basement here, um, how much load management is done by the coach's wishes and the player yielding to the coach. You know, like a good player is going to be coachable and going to listen to his coach sometimes when they don't want to do things. I agree, but um, I also think, you know, when we talk about LeBron, obviously he's not LeBron, but LeBron's playing because he wants to play, so I think... Yeah. Because I think the NBA is a little bit different that, you know, if you're a big, strong person and you want to play, you're playing. Like, That's not he, his personality. No, exactly. He's not a he's not a, a, he's a quiet guy. He's a laid-back um, guy. So. But it's hard, it was hard for me to put him down lower on the list, and maybe I should have. But I guess just watching him play, he had those big hands like Dr. Yes. J, yeah. and watching his all-around game. Right. And that, he is, he's... He, he's, he's this is why this is good. Yeah, we have, this is why, why this is good. We all have different. Well, where'd you have Kawhi on your well, list, Jeff? Go ahead, why don't you? Well, I mean, yeah, whatever you want to do. Well, I actually have him below ten because of that. Like, I was, I had him in. I made one list, as you mentioned, yeah. and then I started looking at, and that's why I dropped him into the honorable mentions. All right, as we will talk about. But right, okay. yeah, so he was my eight. My nine was Rick Barry. Um, you know, he only has one ring, one only, only one <laughs> ring, one Finals MVP or whatever. Um, I did uh, two steals a game, which I was surprised. I didn't realize he was that good defensively or whatever. Now, again, that might be – some of those were ABA days, I think, maybe, or whatever. Um, but two steals a game, uh, you know, the free throws, even though they're granny style or whatever, the highest percentage, 90% from what I understand. It matters. I don't care which way you're saying. Yeah, they're, they go in. They go in. That's all that matters. That's right. And, and one thing I f uh, saw when I was looking things up, 35.8 uh, scoring champ when he when he won a scoring champ title that's the highest other than Wilt or MJ now I don't know if that's true as of now like maybe Harden or someone in the last few years has done more than that but I believe when that was written it, that that was honest I was surprised that yeah. he had that high of an average <coughs> whatever, so so he was my he was my nine and real quick Dominique was my 10 and my 10 11 like my honorable mentions and 10 like I had a really hard time whatever Again, I'm older, so Dominique was, you know, he was in my right. my era yeah, or whatever. Yeah. So, um, Dominique, no rings, a scoring champ or whatever, but, you know, 24 8 a game. So, yeah, he, he ended up on my 10. And I'll, I'll get into my honorable mentors later, but I'll let you yeah. guys. You know, yeah, I was going to say, so, you know, we have some similarities there. I have John Havlicek at six. You mentioned all the different things, so, you know, we're not going to keep going. Scotty Pippen was seven for me. So, I dropped wow. him. Just yeah. like I said, I. 
when you look at and again I'm just looking at some of the st statistics and I know you know players are more than statistics but again just you know being the number two guy he was only, only at 16 a game and then when he had to be the man you know so but I asked I asked myself this question too when I'm looking at my list Jeff if I'm drafting guys right now and I have my pick of the litter where'd you have him I had seven so there's six guys you would say I would put well, I would pick ahead of him if I'm forming my team right now. Who well, was your, who was, think, you was ahead of him? Well, here's what here's why. No, I but who was ahead of him? I'm being so John, serious. John Havlicek. You're, you're putting Havlicek ahead of Pippen. Like you would pick Havlicek ahead of Pippen well, right but, now if you had to form a team. Well, I guess here's the difference because we're just talking about this position, right? Sure. You know, when you're talking about an overall team, um, you know it depends. I mean, over. We've like, for example, now we've done three different positions, and we all have the same number one guy. So if we would take all the number one guys in those positions, we you know, that'd be a super team. True. So, but you can't. So I guess I mean, it, it's hard to say what I take Scotty. I probably would maybe take Scotty like Pippen because I could saw him play. Right. I don't. I haven't seen John have. If you're doing play. a fa hey, that's what I'm saying. If you're doing a fantasy draft, and those two guys are the guys you have in this round, the other guys on your list are gone. But it depends. I guess I'm who not else picking have a check over Pippen. I, I think that Pippen will bring more to the table than I Havlicek. Think, I said, for me, though, it depends on who else I have on my team. Like, if you need scoring, that's why I would take, you know, Havlicek. You think Havlicek's going to score more than Pippen in a, in a, in a game? I, and I, I disagree. He did. You're right. It's hard to say. He did, but that's why it's all, it's it's hard to, you know, the, go the by generation there. The generations I think is, is right. very difficult. So, my eight is Rick Barry, as you just mentioned. Again, he scored 25 points per game. And, you know, seven rebounds and five assists. So when you look at <coughs> statistics, he was up there. My nine was Dominique. I think he got. I think he gets lost with all the Jordan stuff. Yeah. Like, and his teams were terrible. I mean, not terrible. I shouldn't say terrible. But um, you know, he had nobody else on those teams. I can always never remember but people. Again, on his as team. a great player, he didn't get a, he didn't get him over the hump and elevate them. Yeah. I think Dominique, the guys Scottie in our Pippen generation. By himself. What's that? Scotty Pippen didn't take him to a championship. Right, that's by true. Himself. But so I think when just... I look at Dominique, I look at a guy who I don't think he had all the skills necessary. I don't think, I mean, I don't want Dominique shooting threes. No true. way. True. And I want my three shooting threes. I want my, you know, my, my small forward to be able but to shoot nowadays, threes. Different so. game, but yeah. Different game, but I want to, I, I, he's not a shooter, he's a dunker. I think a Dominique, I think, is a, as a powerful guy. But again, if you think about it, then if you're saying that, if he didn't shoot, He's averaging 25 points a game. How is he doing it? He's getting to the rim, which I means in the 80s, he's he's getting pounded, too, as we were talking about getting. Right. Yeah. And he wasn't, I don't think of him as being a super strong, but I mean, as far as, like, looking at him, right. because he was kind of lanky, but, you know, like, think about that. He was averaging 20, 25 a game, and who knows? It didn't yeah. even have a three. I don't know. Like, I don't even know what his field is. Field goal percentage. Yeah, so, so, so he must have right. been penetrating I mean, and, you know, and getting I, there. I think that, you know, going to your earlier point with Dominique, he was on not very good teams, so it's a little easier to get those statistics on bad teams because there's no one else to rely on. You know, who did he have to rely on? Spud Webb? Like, I, I, I yeah. couldn't tell you who else he had to rely on. So I think those statistics, statistics because he was on a mediocre team, I mean, they made the playoffs once in a while, I think. I don't, yeah, I think they made yeah, playoffs most, most of the years. years yeah. um, but they didn't do anything. So, but... You know, if you have to carry it yourself, whereas another guy, which I don't know if I've heard him on your list yet, which I'm is your man, uh, James Worthy. Where's your James Worthy? He's one honorable mention. All right, so you know, again, and I, so I'm anyway. going to put it to you, Jeff. You got to choose between Dominique and James Worthy to put in the game. I think I might be picking James Worthy to go in over him. He is the third. He's the third fiddle on that on a great team. All right. So go ahead, finish well, up your list. I also again took tennis, Paul Pierce. So you guys mentioned all the different things of Paul Pierce. Um, but just going by when you were saying it, for me, it, it's hard to say who I would pick because you also just have to think who else is on the team and what jobs are they doing. Like when we talked about power forwards, we had Dennis Rodman. Well, he can be, if he's going to be your, like if you're, if you're going to pick four other guys, I'd take Dennis Rodman because of rebounding. Well, th so think about it this way, Jeff. So, the game's on the line. You got you, you got five guys on the floor, and let's just say, for example, that Paul Pierce and Dominique Wilkins are on the floor at the same time. At the end of the game, on your team, you got five seconds left on the clock. Who are you giving the ball to? The I'm giving it to Paul Pierce every day of the week before Dominique. Dominique is a second option, or go rebound, Dominique. Yeah, I'm, 
But again, I have to go, have to go look. I don't. But really I also remember. But I also again, I'm going to look yeah. at Paul Pierce. He went. He won what? He won one championship. When? When he got the other guys. Well, I've re- yeah. And so, so <laughs> champ- the championship talk. But listen, I'm just you know, saying, if you want to start talking championships. I don't see Big Shot Bob on anybody's list, no. well, but that guy's got titles. So no, it's hard to say. Saying, titles are hard to say. But when you're saying about who do I pick, again, it's just because when you have all these different positions and different players, everybody has a different role. Yeah. Right. And so... So, now, <coughs> my six, I already told you, was Kawhi. My yeah. seven didn't show up on any of your lists, and may, I don't know why. Maybe it's just early in the career. Was Giannis. It's hard to put him in a position. It is hard to put him up. You got to put him yeah. somewhere. Right yeah. now, he is showing up on none of our lists. Right? He wasn't yeah. a five. I put more of a two or a He one, wasn't yeah. a four. I can't see him as a two. I put. I see him as a three. I'm trying to think where the Bucks play him. I think they probably play him at a three. Yeah. So I put Giannis in again. His body of work is real small. Yeah. But if, and I think in ten years he's going to show up on everyone's right. list. But I, I, I see him as a three. So I couldn't include him on my two list. No way. I, I didn't. So. I think he's a guy that has to be in the conversation because, you know, maybe I put him too high. But uh, my eight was James Worthy. So, uh, you know, postseason numbers for James Worthy are better than his regular season numbers. And he's playing with two of the guys that are arguably in the top 10, 20 to ever play the game in Magic and Kareem to be the third wheel and still score 21.1 and have 5.2 rebounds, which is higher than his in-season average. In-season average is 17.6 and 5.1. So uh, when you look at the playoffs, uh, where it really matters, this is a guy who shows up. And I'm, I'm surprised, Jeff, because I know you're a big James Worthy fan that he didn't show up oh, higher. Oh, he's a Laker guy, list. and you didn't put him either. Yeah. yeah, and because I just think he gets overshadowed by the greatness of those two other players – but is a great player in his own right. Uh, my number nine was Kevin Durant. I didn't. I didn't want the guy in my top ten, but I couldn't help but have him there. Um, and I talked about him, so I'm not going to well, talk about him. All right, anymore. let me just bring you back to when you came to me. Again, I would take Durant over well over those other guys that you mentioned. When you're just talking about in, in what? To what you in what? You know, in a draft, in, in a end of the game, all you would take. No way. No way. I'm taking Kevin Durant. Over giving the ball to Larry Bird at the end of the no, game. No, no, no. The ball to I don't mean Larry Bird. I mean Scotty to Scotty Pippen. I just think Kevin Durant is. It's about it's about character, and I question his character, and I question his coachability, and I question well, all those kinds of things. Okay. But I'm looking at about forming a whole team. I so in it. the draft aspect, and in the end end of the game last shot, maybe I'm giving it to Kevin. Remember Durant. Remember Scotty Pippen over Pippen took sat out mm-hmm. in a playoff play. game. I'm just saying, when you talk about personality, I mean, he did, this, he did, you know, and when it wasn't as, I think the other thing we got to remember too, you know, with, you know, the way things are today compared to when they were back then, we didn't hear about all those different things, right. you know, so all these 24 hours, right? A lot of these things that are coming about is what we hear about it, you know, instantly. Yeah, I mean, like the, the James Worthies of the world didn't have the opportunity to say, well, I'm going to go play with, I'm going to go help build a super team. Right. You know, they didn't have that opportunity. So would they have done it? I think the answer is no, but they might have. Who knows? Right. So I, I got you on that. I just think that, you know, again, I, in five years, ten years, I could totally change my view on Kevin Durant because I'm going to tell you, five years ago, I probably felt differently about LeBron James than I do right now. Right. I probably would have put Larry ahead of LeBron five years ago, but not now. Right. Um, my ten was Elgin Baylor, and, you know, again, his, his, his other resume pieces don't hold up for me. I'm going to tell you that Dominique didn't even make – an honorable mention for me. I have a guy, a couple guys in my honorable mention that, that um, two guys in particular that I think were just hurt by injuries, but were great players. One is some that the young guy had never heard of probably, which is Bernard King. Bernard King was a great player, hurt by knee injuries, which in today's game wouldn't have hurt him as much. But at that time, right. you know, like you, you had knee injuries, it puts you out. He came back and still played pretty well. Right. And another guy that I think, you know, would have been top five. Had he not had injuries, is Grant Hill. Grant Hill. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I see you shaking your head, Matt. Tell me what you think about Grant Hill. I just wrote down fall? Grant Hill, what if. I just think that he he would have been easily top five or whatever um, yeah, if he stays healthy. I mean, just his, his athleticism, his uh, – just the, the, the vision, everything. I mean, I, 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 I thought when I put this to get list together, I'm like, you know, I want to go back and see Grant Hill play. Like, I want to go on YouTube or whatever and look up Grant Hill to see him play or whatever because 
you know, I remember him more in college than I do the NBA. Correct. You know, it was a, I guess you know in Orlando, I think he was there at some point or whatever. And yep, they might have had him some championships there. Well, and I think so. kind of he was at a journeyman a little bit. He bounced from team to team. Yeah, he got injured. Injury, you know, he's like you know yeah. one of those guys, uh, like you know a guy that might end up on our point guard list, like a Penny Hardaway of like unfulfilled, yeah. awesome potential <coughs> because of injury. And that's not their fault. Injuries happen to guys. Yeah. Um, you know, had he not had those injuries, I think he would be probably a top five guy. Um, and I didn't look at all his statistics, but they're pretty good for his career. But the you know the minutes and the the timeout and stuff just really hurt him. Yeah. So who else do you have on your? I, I have. I, I'm uh, actually. I had James worthy in my top ten, and then I knocked him. Down. That's I, the same I, thing I, happened. I'm putting him back at number eight. He's he's leaping after the conversation. He's leaping Dominique and Rick Barry or whatever. Don't let the big, don't let big, the voice no, 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 big, no, I'm a Lakers guy. <laughs> big game James. You know, I mean, really, you think about it. if you go if you go back and look. I believe it was the 87-88 finals um, against the Celtics or whatever. The Celtics were – Kareem was, was past his peak or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, Magic, at, at that point, he did not – he had his, his shot was way better than it was when he came into the league or whatever. James Worthy was the difference in that, that type of, those type of series or whatever. And that's how he got the name, Big Game James. That's how the playoff yeah. stats, that's how he got that, that moniker. Um, you know, the three rings. And I guess that, that finals, he won the MVP, which I didn't realize or whatever. Um, I had a guy that nobody mentioned yet, Adrian Danley. He's on my honorable yeah. mention. Yeah, um, he's back in the day and with the you know, with the Jazz most for most of his career, if not all his career. Um, just I think it was twenty four or something a game, and just but he just never really did anything like that. No rings, no right. whatever. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't really see anything as far as all D or yeah. anything. And so. you know, great he's players are yeah. You know. Great players are often hurt. In this case, another one probably who by teams who don't put other guys around them and they're not in a position back then to do what they do now to, to make their own decisions and so if the team doesn't build anyone and you know what do we know from Utah it's on the other side of the country for yeah. us so right. we're not you know if Especially he had played back then. <laughs> yeah and if he had played in Philadelphia because oh. we were living outside of Philadelphia here well then he might have been higher on our list because we might have thought of him as someone greater because he was closer if he had played in a bigger market like New York right. you know but because of where he's playing and not winning anything, it's hard yeah. to put him up higher. Although maybe he deserves to be higher. Right. I also had Paul Pierce in my honorable mentions. Um, you know, discussions here. I, I might raise him. I don't know if he might get to ten or nine or whatever. Um, my, my biggest thing is a Lakers fan, that he Celtics or whatever. So, so that might have dipped him down, or whatever. Um, but I didn't realize when I looked stuff up that it was Shaq, I believe, that gave him the moniker the Truth. Whatever, I, which I, 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 didn't, I, I didn't know that or whatever. Yeah, I, know that I think I saw that on something. Once yeah. Time. Yeah. Um, and then the last guy I had in an honorable mention or whatever was Carmelo Anthony. I think um, if, if Carmelo actually had some sort of a mentality, killer instinct mentality, um, he could have been greater. I, I, when I think of Carmelo in his best days, I think of him as a nugget. Um, you know, the Knicks or whatever, that, those days, whatever. And, and actually what he did for Team USA, um, I believe it may have been the I don't know, 08 Olympics or the 12 Olympics or whatever, whichever one it was. I think he hit like six threes or something mm -hmm. in a, like in a in one one stretch when he was in the game or whatever. So right. so Carmelo, this is a guy that you know I think could have been higher up if the personality wise he would have been. And that's the problem with with Carmelo. He's not even going to make my honorable mention because he's a guy who cares a lot about individual statistics and never cared in, in my opinion enough about winning basketball games. He cared about scoring points. If you are going to want to win basketball games, you're going to be willing to share the basketball. You're great talent. Great talent. Another unfulfilled potential, I yes. think, because he couldn't get his head wrapped around that this is a team game. Right. And in order for me to win, I have to be able to give a little bit in order to be able to win. So, you know, that that hurt him. And uh, just not, a great, not a, a, an all-time great, in my opinion, at all. Um, could have been. Should have been, Should have been. Right. Um, but never did for a whole lot of reasons. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, so just to go back, so I have yeah. Adrian Dantley, yeah. I have James Worthy, yeah. um, I have Kawhi. I actually put Carmelo on my, because of like the new school, I have him on as honorable mention too, right. uh, looking at statistics. Another guy I had, which I've, I don't even, you know, I don't know much about this guy, is Paul Arizin. Um he was a 10-time All-Star. He won a championship. He averaged 23 points per game and nine rebounds a game. So another guy that I don't know much about, yeah. start looking at stats and looking at, you know, he, he right. fell into a lot of different, you know, when you looked at top 20s right. or those kind of, you know, statistics. 
Yeah, as really far as know. yeah, I don't know but much about you, him either. If you looked at guys that are much older than us, they might include him in, as a no-brainer. Right. He's not a guy that I really know at all. Right. And likewise, the younger kids today are, are going to probably uh, think about Elgin Baylor not going right. to make the list. Dr. J well, is going to be further down on their list. And James Worthy. And, and, and James Worthy down. is a guy they – yeah, because he just doesn't come to their mind because of that. So part of this leads into the the middle-aged dudes that we are in our 40s and 50s um, and, and how we see the game because of guys we saw play. And I think that's why, you know, we often – and we'll continue to talk about Jordan being the GOAT because he's a guy we saw play um, – more than some of these well, other guys. Like, we didn't see Wilt play, and I know that's not the list we're talking about today, but it's hard to compare because you never saw him play, really. I mean, you watched videos or whatever, but it's right. a different thing. And well, it's a different yeah. game. It's a slower game back then than it is. Yes. Right. Well, I was going to say, another difference, I think, too, is, you know, besides ages, it's, you know, we still like playing, right. and we all have different games than when we play. Right. Like, you are a defensive-minded right. player, right. so you like the, de- you know, as you, you'll bring up the defensive guys. Right. I like, you know, bring up the Ds. Like, you know, when we did the, you know, the, the power forwards and the centers, like, like I didn't relate as much to those games, but I don't play that right. game. But now when we're in the threes and, and you know, we're going to be talking eventually about the, uh, the guards, like, that's where I was. That's why I think sometimes we think th- – about how we play maybe sometimes, you know, and just yeah. how, you know, that type of situation. Because like I said, a three, you know, has a lot of different skill, you know, with shooting, with rebounding. I mean, you look at, I mean, we start looking at some of these guys, you know, statistics, you know, like you're now seeing that assist jump in there or, you know, well, the rebound. these guys yeah. are some of the best all-around statistical right. players and all-around players because they have to be. A good small forward is going to do all those things, and they and they do. And that's these are the some of the best players to ever play the game, right? Because of that, like you have to have that skill set. You have to be able to handle the ball a little bit. You have to be, which is one place where I would probably say Dominique doesn't have those skills, by the way, uh, to handle the ball a little bit. You have to be able to pass the ball. You have to be able to shoot the ball a little bit. You have to be able to rebound, and and that's where you see these guys like a LeBron and a Larry Bird and a Dr. J who are falling high on our list and Scottie Pippen who are all-around basketball players that possess all the skills you need in basketball. If you're teaching or coaching a young kid, you're teaching them all these things and these guys, these guys have all of that where that, that small forward has to possess all that. Your bigger guys, your fours and your fives don't need that. Your ones and your twos don't you're not going to look at high rebounds, for example, although some of those guys might be great rebounders. That's not what you're looking at. So this guy... The three is your best all-around player. And can we say LeBron James might be arguably the best all-around player? Yes, he might be. Um, and for some, for some old, old schoolers, Larry, Larry Bird was. You yeah, know, yeah. Like, you know, you know, so that, that's what's unique about this. And, and I think, you, you know, you're right, Jeff. You do look at your, you know, your perspective a little bit. I think you can't, for these guys – Negate defense. Offense gets the glory, but defense wins the game. Right. And all and the top guys here were all great defenders, which is one of the reasons why, by the way, I wouldn't put Carmelo in that list at all because his defense stinks, and he's not a guy that I want on my team for a lot of reasons. But that one of the reasons he he hurts you on the other end of the floor in some ways. It's like he has to outscore the you know, with a liability on defense in some ways. And that's why, you know, he's not even an honorable mention for me because of that and a lot of other reasons. But, you know, these guys are some of your best all-around players, and they have to be to make top ten or, yeah. or even honorable mention. Yeah, definitely. So it sounds like we're wrapping up our list. It sounds like uh, we all, again, just by happenstance, we make these right. lists independently, agree that yeah. LeBron James was the best small – is the best – Maybe will be forever. Uh, we'll find out the best small forward. We agree that Larry Bird's number two. And after that, lots of disagreement. Um, so we hope it will spark some conversations and some thoughts for you. Um, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time. You have been listening to the Two Mats and a Jeff podcast.